All right, welcome back. So the title of this mini lecture is The Cold War in Latin America. And we're going to talk about five things uh, that you need to know as you broadly start to think about the Cold War as it relates to the many nations of Latin America. Now, we'll probably do a few of these because it's a very complex issue. There's obviously a lot of different ways in which this particular conflict played out through the platforms of these different nations. So let's dig into it. All right, five things. So first, containment. All right, so uh, in the Western Hemisphere, U.S. Uh, foreign policy dominated, uh, and the, the basic U.S. foreign policy end of the 1940s, early 50s that it began was containment. It was, we've got to stop communism from popping up where it doesn't exist. We've got to contain it where it does exist. So this means that the United States is going to be pressuring nations all over the world to either support their efforts, or if they're not going to support the American effort, they're going to be uh, stopped from spreading uh, you know, their own uh, domestic or, or foreign policy interests. So containment uh, was the name of the game. Secondly, uh, the Rio Treaty. All right? So the United States is going to try through a lot of different tools, uh, both hard and soft power tools, uh, to be able to stop communism or contain the spread of communism uh, all over the world. And uh, one of the things that the Americans are going to do is uh, consolidate through diplomacy uh, a number of different regions of the world uh, as they're preparing for the possibility of a, a global, at least diplomatic conflict or possible military conflict with the Soviet Union. Uh, so you end up with something called the Rio Treaty, which is signed in 1947, uh, and it involves a number of the nations of Latin America. Now, this whole concept of it was, you know, hemispheric defense, basically, uh, the idea being, you know, an attack on one nation is kind of a, an attack on all. Uh, so it was this scene this idea of each of these nations are kind of all banding together, right? The American all banding together, uh, you know, so, so, you know, on paper, it's supposed to be pretty good. All right. Uh, number three, number three, school of the Americas. Uh, so, uh, beginning in the early 1960s, the United States recognized that the possibilities of the, the military conflicts that they could be fighting, all over the world, uh, you know, instead of a nuclear conflict with the Soviet Union or a much larger conventional conflict, uh, that it might be some kind of irregular conflict. So in the U.S., they create, for example, the, the Green Berets. Uh, these are supposed to be, you know, irregular warriors, you know, inspired by, uh, you know, unconventional warfare all over the world, guerrilla style, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, so what the U.S. does is that it could create a sort of special... Forces training school, special warfare training school uh, that was referred to for a long time called the, the School of the Americas. And this was where a lot of the advisors who were sent down to Latin America would train. Uh, and a lot of individuals from different Latin American militaries could come up uh, and train at this, uh, this, this training school. Now, uh, the training school itself has eventually been folded into uh, another uh, U.S. military base because of the backlash against it, because many of the individuals who were training there and then going down to Latin America were, uh, you know, back home to Latin America were uh, participating in some pretty repressive regimes. Uh, you know, so they, it, you know, it was really sort of cited as a place where they were, you know, kind of training up individuals who were going to commit some pretty terrible acts. All right, number four, uh, it's a basic term, junta. Uh, generally, you would see different kinds of juntas come to power in different nations uh, in Latin America in the post-war era, pre-war era too, but uh, the post-World War II era during the Cold War. Uh, a good example might be Brazil, uh, the junta comes to power. 60s, uh, you know, there's positives and negatives. Uh, so, you know, a junta usually is going to be a kind of oligarchic uh, government, you know, rule of a few. It can be usually uh, pretty heavy handed, pretty dictatorial, pretty centralized, right? Sort of this kind of thing. Uh, and again, there's there's positives and negatives uh, to, to any kind of regime like that, uh, because they're going to have different things uh, that they're seeking uh, to, to be able to uh, achieve. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, you know, in uh, you know, in, in Brazil, you're going to have things like uh, the passage of um, it's like the Trans Amazonian Highway, you know, stuff like that by the early 70s. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, all right, number five, uh, Peronism. Uh, Juan Peron, uh, 
uh, you know, who comes to power is perhaps more noted for his wife, uh, Eva Vida, uh, you know, famed partly because in, in America, because Madonna made a movie about her. Uh, but, you know, the, the cult of personality surrounding his leadership, uh, you know, is an, is an interesting part of, you know, that immediate post-World War II era moving into navigating the Cold War. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.